This is Jackie with your All Access interview. I'm here that's with, you. that's me. I'm here with Johnny Christmas of Real Big Fish. We are at Hi. Baltimore Soundstage for the second leg of your tour. The second leg, yes. The first leg, uh, it, it was a much smaller leg. It's like half a leg. How do you stand on half a leg? Uh, very carefully. Yeah. Luckily, I'm a professional at standing on half a leg. Speaking of being a professional, Real Big Fish has been around since uh, 1991 or so. Yep. Uh, what do you attribute to your band's longevity? Uh, not wanting to get a real job. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not only that. Uh, I think Aaron has written the soundtrack for everybody's like teenage and right up to the time that you graduate college and buy a house and get hit in the face with life. I think the music really resonates with everybody. And uh, so it's not only that we don't want to get a job, it's that we love this band. Uh, I love playing in this band. It's the most fun you can have with your clothes on. And I think what we do is really special. So I think we all value that and we all want to keep it going. And the music industry certainly has changed since 1991. Yeah. Um, what does success look like for you uh, and for the band now? Well, it, it's still being able to uh, be viable, have people come to the shows, and for us to make a living. I mean, the, the, as much as we would be down for doing this for free, uh, that's not exactly going to pay my mortgage and put food on my baby's table because uh, she needs shoes. She likes a lot of shoes. She's two and a half and has more shoes than than I do, have ever had in my entire life. So she has a shoe habit. She's a two and a half year old and has a shoe habit. And uh, we need help with that shoe habit. And just wait. It gets even better. Oh, great. Not just the shoe habit, but other habits. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's a girl thing. You wouldn't just understand. Oh, yes, I know. I heard... heard fingers get painted by her mom and she's very excited about that and so I'm losing ground with with her not becoming a girly girl I'm like uh, there's no hope uh, I just want to get dirty with her and give her wrenches and let her ride motorcycles and she just wants to paint her nails I... just take her fishing It'll, it's a good start okay fishing okay we'll, we'll... I mean it's a generation thing I don't know speaking of generations hey I'm great with segues Excellent. sorry folks well um Music is different in the, in the way that when I think you and I grew up going to concerts, people went to concerts and they watched the concerts. And that was just about it. That was my next question. You are so smart. How do you feel when you go to a show and you look out in an audience and all you see are screens? Well, it, it's a weird thing because I think my wife and I have this kind of fight going back and forth that when you're taking pictures of the moment, you're not being in the moment. You are saving that for another time for you to go back and look at. And uh, I, I know a lot of people take videos so they can post terrible sounding video up on YouTube. Uh, uh, that, that just sounds horrid. And uh, I understand that, but don't text your friends going, hey, the concert's totally awesome. You're just like missing like, like six jokes and three songs and... Uh, just watch the show. Be in the moment. Enjoy the moment. Put down your cell phones. Yes. Please. Put the phone down and back away slowly. Very slowly. I dare you guys to leave your phones in your car. That would never, ever happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't really mind people taking pictures. I, I think that's great. It's the taking the video that I know is going to sound terrible. Because it's way too loud in there and it's just going to slam their mics uh, that are on their phones. And maybe they don't know that. So I'm telling you, the video is going to sound horrid. Take a picture. It'll last longer. Absolutely. Or make an oil painting. Someone in the back. Yeah, exactly. Happy little trees. Uh, we mentioned uh, earlier that this is the second leg of the tour uh, with Less Than Jake. What makes, uh, what makes you and Less Than Jake such a good pair? They are so... Do I have language re restrictions? They're so fucking awesome. Uh, it's great uh, to be out with another band that you can watch every night and you see different things. They perform excellently they are amazing performers they have great songs and they're professionals they 
know how to do it. They know how to put on a show. You know, they know that it's not just music, it's entertainment. You're there entertaining the crowd. Uh, and I think that's something that we pride ourselves in as well, is that we definitely know that it's entertainment. And as well as music. Uh, you're not going to see us turn our backs on the audience and do a Miles Davis and uh, let the music speak for itself. It's more of a, we're down on your level. We are engaging in this together. I, I mean, between the band and the audience. We are enjoying this experience together. And we're not any different than you are. And um, the music is awesome. And you're there to have a really good time. Both us and you to have a good time. Absolutely. So I, I feel like you guys are probably pretty comfortable with each other now. You've known each other for a while. Who plays better pranks and what's the best prank that's been pulled? We are not a prank band. I know that, that sounds so boring, but I don't think you can keep a band together for 23 years by playing pranks on each other. No, not each other, unless than Jake. Oh, uh, well, yeah, e even that, even that. Uh, so... Every once in a while, Chris, their, one of their lead singers, will come out and sing, like, beer with us. Or uh, JR, the saxophone player, will come out and play beer with us. Or sometimes our horns will go out and play, um, like, all my our friends are metalheads with them. Uh, it's really an enjoyable thing that we're all adults, not to say that we don't joke. <laughs> but you're, you're not going to find, like, a... Like a like a big turd in a bag on fire in front of somebody's bus. Um, it's really a, a lot of respect. And we go out and we'll, ha we'll have drinks together and talk. And uh, it's, uh, it's an enjoyable experience to be out with guys that are your friends. So you're a little bit grown up. That's fair. Uh, back in the winter, you guys did an all 90 set. Any thoughts about doing that again? Oh, yes. We, we could do it. We could do an all 90 set. We could do a, you know, play just one record. The thing is that we've done that before, and Aaron didn't announce it. We played all of uh, Turn the Radio Off in Boston one year, and nobody noticed. We played it front to back, <laughs> and nobody noticed. Nobody noticed. And, you know, he didn't announce it. He should have announced it. He should have made a big deal out of it. And uh, nobody got it. So some things need to be spoon-fed to the crowd, and that was one of those things that you need to go, this is a big deal. We're going to play all of Turn the Radio Off back to front, and all of you that want to come and, and hear that record come out. So, yes, we'll do stuff like that again. It just, uh, there needs to be better uh, letting everybody know what's happening. I use that social media, damn it. Yeah, yeah, and, and he is in charge of all that stuff, and he does a great job with that. This was just one of those things that he thought like he would secretly do that people would get, and they did not get it. Any thoughts on making a live album? Oh, we've done that before. Uh, Anytime soon, though. Maybe there will be another live video thing. Uh, I think it would be fun to do a more in-depth uh, video of recording a record or and or doing like destination uh, videos, a, a, a destination live show, like playing in Buenos Aires or like playing in Tokyo and and making that a, a big part of it. Um, so there, there's always things in the works, so we'll see what happens. Ooh, I like that little tease. Uh, in the spring, you played lots of festivals overseas. Um, how do you make sure that you leave your mark with fans? I, <laughs> well, I... We're so different than every other band out there that I really find it hard to believe that we don't make our mark. Uh, we went out and played uh, a festival called Sonosphere that was outside of London. And uh, so we played earlier in the day. Uh, it was like 60,000 people. It was a sea of people. And uh, we're probably one of the only bands that will make jokes up there on stage at, at that festival. Uh, Metallica headlined. And I, I think it, it's still coming back to that. Um, this is entertainment. We are there. You guys are in this together with us. Uh, we, we definitely don't separate uh, and 
feel that we are above the crowd. They're, it's so special to get to do what we get to do. And I think that we make everybody feel included, make people forget about the shitty days that they have sometimes. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we can do for kids, people in general. And a large part of attending festivals or concerts, especially the younger they get, so I've heard anyway, uh, is band merchandise. Do you guys have anything that sort of sets you apart or anything that's particularly funny or unique or something that you might have thought of? We definitely have silly shirts. We, we have a great one, uh, Dr. Seuss, uh, Dr. Seuss shirt. <laughs> that is a play on the uh, red fish, blue fish shirt. And then it says real big fish at the bottom. So uh, that one is hilarious. And I'm so surprised that we haven't got sued yet. Uh, over the years, uh, you guys have supported causes and charities. Is there a couple that uh, you're working with right now or would like to in the future? There is right now the one that we're working with that is finding uh, bone marrow donors uh, for, for people that uh, have bone cancer and stuff. And so those guys are coming out to the shows and doing swabs in the crowd. And they've already found a match from one of our shows that we did in Texas. So uh, they're saving somebody's life. Eight matches. Eight matches. I, I, I didn't know. Uh, that's, that's the latest word, that they are found eight, mansion, eight matches for bone marrow uh, to save some people's lives. How awesome is that? That's a great gift. That's, that's an awesome, awesome way to link the right people. Real Big Fish saving people's lives every day. So what's up next for you guys after this tour? Oh, more touring. <laughs> we, we are on, on the nonstop tour. Actually, we have a little break in July and part of August, which uh, I haven't been home for July in 10 years. Um, also, I haven't been home for my wife's birthday in August in more years than I can count on my fingers. So that's going to do me a lot of good, being home for my wife's birthday. And take your daughter fishing. It's a great time to go. And I'll take my daughter fishing. May and maybe I'll get her a motorcycle while I'm off. A, a, ra a raging Hot Wheels? Please be that, Dad. Oh, no, no. A real motorcycle. She's two and a half. All right. Yeah, well, go she, for it. She needs a, a few years. She's still a little too small, but uh, we'll, we'll get her on a little dirt bike so she can climb hills and jump. She's going to jump over my house. If, if she's, she's related to me, so she's going to jump over the house. It's going to happen. I can't stop her. Well, there's no stopping real big fish. Stay tuned for much more. This is Jackie, thanks to All Access and In the Key of Change. All done. <laughs> no problem. And we stayed under 15 minutes.